Three up, two across, tap that play button three times and walk through the archway into Dialogue Alley. Hello and welcome to the podcast. Dialogue Alley is a show about Harry Potter books, book translations, and all other things magical. I'm Eric from Nocturne. Eric, and with me today is Carly from All the Pretty Books. Hi, Carly. Hello, how are you? Doing fine. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you. I'm just, you know, enjoying my day. Yeah, as am I. Uh, we finally broke the uh, sweltering heat streak that we had going on up here. So we were like upper 90s for like two and a half weeks straight. So those. Yikes. I know you're used to that kind of stuff down there. We but, are, uh, but we actually, it's cooler today because we're actually getting a lot of thunderstorms. Oh, I would love for some thunderstorms because my yard is dry as a desert and that is not what I want it to be like. We have weeds that are as tall as people right now, so we've had a lot of rain, which is good. We need it. Yes. Well, uh, send some up here when you're finished with it, because I need rain. Anyway, (laughs) welcome to episode 16, everybody, of the Dialogue Alley podcast. Carly and I are both uh, Harry Potter book collectors. We mainly collect translations, uh, among other things. Carly claims that she doesn't collect Funko Pops, but she most certainly does, (laughs) and I most certainly do not. But I'm I'm actually selling some, which we'll talk about that, in the news. That's and that's why I brought it up because I knew you'd want to mention that. Um, so <laughs> today, uh, it's just the two of us today. So we're going to be talking about something that Carly wanted to do, and that is about um, soft cover books, particularly the UK soft cover books, um, but also some of the US soft cover books as well. And Carly wanted to talk about. Um, Just kind of their value and things to look for, because these are things that Carly um, and and myself now that she's turned me on to this, uh, they're listed on eBay and people don't seem to really know like what they're looking at or or what they're selling. It just seems like it's all over the place. Right. And I know we've touched on this before. So for those of you that think we've already done this, we kind of have, but this is going to be a deeper dive into that topic only because it's still questions that I'm still getting quite a bit about. Is this soft cover book a first edition? Is it a first print? What's the value? And so on. And I don't ever mind questions, but if I can help answer many questions at once, especially when it's a similar question, I don't see why I don't try to do that. Exactly. So We'll be talking about that. We also have our translation of the show. Uh, We have a little bit of news, not too much today. And if we have time for another question, we'll do that. But I think this listener question that is actually going to be the main segment will take up the majority of that time. So I'm, I'm excited to get going. How about you, Carly? Me too. All right. Let's get into some news. All right. So... I don't have any book mail coming in that I'm aware of unless I bought something while sleeping, which I've actually kind of done before, but that's a different story for a different day. Um, oh. I am having, a, <laughs> I am selling some of, like I said earlier, I'm selling some of my Funko Pops and I'm also selling, I've got quite a bit of books that I've been listing for sale. So if you're looking for, you know, Harry Potter books, whether they're UK, US or translations, I have so many you guys and I've got to get rid of them so I can have space in my house. Um, Because it looks like my house is literally there. It's wall-to-wall books in almost every room while I'm sorting through and getting moved in. And I'm just trying to thin them out. Um, And most of these, it's not out of my collection. So for those of you who've asked, you know, why I'm selling my collection, I promise I'm not. My collection is very much intact and still growing. I'm just getting rid of some of the books that I bought over the years um, to sell. So that's what's going on right now. I looked through some of the ones that you were selling, and I mean, it really, I don't want to use the word hodgepodge, because that makes it sound like they're (laughs) not good books, but I mean, you really are selling very random stuff. So if if there are, is there, if there's like a random book that you need, this is worth checking out, because if you need like, I don't know if you're selling this, like Georgian Prisoner of Azkaban, or all the way down to like US Goblet of Fire without a dust jacket. 
Right. Just, you know, you know it's just, it's very random stuff. Well, what I'm doing is originally there was going to be like an order to what I was selling, but then I just, I've just decided that I'm kind of tired of looking at boxes of books for sale that I've got. And I've just had to move everything and I don't want to do it again since I still have my big book collection that has to go wherever I do. So if I can, you know, what I'm doing is I'm just taking it like a box or a tote of books, opening it up and listing them for sale and then going and then just opening another box when those go and just continuing that trend. Makes total sense. And yep. you you selling that, I can't remember which U.S. book you were selling without a dust jacket, but it just reminds it me of when, uh, before we were really friends and I won the Instagram contest that you had to get that signed Prisoner of Azkaban book page, which is like the crown jewel of my collection. Um, Yay. And actually, that kind of kicked off our friendship, I think. It did. We were kind of chatting before, and you'd bought things from me off eBay, but we weren't really chatting a whole lot, like maybe a DM here and there and asking about value or if I had this or you'd like to buy that. But then we just kind of really started talking and haven't stopped. And now we do a podcast. Right, which is pretty incredible, if I do say so myself. I completely agree. And that's another reason why this community is fabulous, is I've met the best people and some of my best friends right here. That is very true. Um, oh, so I, I forgot why I would even brought that up. So uh, I saw that you were selling a hardcover book without a dust jacket. And when I got that book page from Carly, she sent it to me inside a uh, first edition Half-Blood Prince hardcover with no dust jacket because yep. you could send it media mail. And honestly, it was probably the safest way to send a yeah. book page in I a giant book. I didn't want it to get bent. So, yeah. So no, I'm just stuck with this random... <laughs> <laughs> Half blood prints that you were probably more than happy to get rid of I was. Uh, from your end. If you need to send it back, I can try and sell it though. I, <laughs> but I was glad to see it go away. Yeah, well, you can sell it if you want. I've, I've no need for it here. So if, <laughs> if someone wants to buy it like for if me, if somebody for... wants a good reading copy, you can be like, oh, here, here's this fabulous copy. Yeah, of Half if someone blood wants print. to, if someone wants to buy a Half Blood Prints U.S. with no dust jacket first edition from me for ten dollars in the U.S. or five dollars, I don't even know. Just make make me an offer. I, <laughs> right, shipping will probably be, be four dollars. So uh, anything over four, and yes. I'll, I'll send it to. You. That's kind of where I am with some of these. It's like cool shipping is four. I'll sell it for five. Yeah, because I've got to buy the mailer. It goes in. That's one dollar. Yep, <laughs> that's true. Uh, or just wait for Amazon packages to arrive. Oh goodness! Um, so Carly, you also mentioned, and I kind of forced you into this by mentioning Funko Pops, but are, you're also selling some Funko Pops? Is that I right? am selling some Funko Pops. I was looking at my collection and I really don't collect Funko Pops, you guys. Most of the Funko Pops that I buy, I buy actually not even most. Every single one of the Funko Pops that I have, I bought from the store that they that they came from, like Barnes & Noble, typically Hot Topic, Target, Walmart, and GameStop. So, you know... I'm not going to, they're not anything that I would ever buy in a collectible, like secondary market. If I can't find it at the store, I'm not going to. That's how I actually wound up with quite a bit of the exclusives is because some of the exclusives are exclusives I really like, like the Luna Lovegood exclusive where, you know, she's got her Spectre specs and she's so precious. She's up on my shelves and I just bought her when she came out and she's actually become really hard to find. But I was going through and I have four totes Uh, because I display my Funkos out of box on my shelves and I have four totes of Funko boxes that are just taking up space in my closet. And I'm like, you know, for someone who doesn't collect something, I have a lot of them. But then I start going through like, which ones do I want to get rid of? And it's like, you know, they're all, and then it was like, no, this is cute. This is cute. I like this guy. He makes me happy. And suddenly I still have four tote boxes full of Funko pops or Funko pop boxes. And it's like, we'll get there one day, but I've gotten rid of some. That's a start. So where are you selling these? And they're all for sale on Instagram right now. Okay, so go check out uh, Carly's Instagram, all the pretty books. Yeah, pretty much almost every weekend for the foreseeable future, I'm going to be listing different things for sale. Just because I've got a they they need a good they need another home. They've lived with me long enough. I've loved them all. They, you know everything that I'm, it just I need to rehome this so I can get space and breathe. I did. I got. Oh, I did get book mail. I got the advanced reader copy of Chamber of Secrets from another collector in New York. And nice. I'm not another collector in New York. He's in New York. I'm. I'm in Minneapolis, so it's not the same place. Um, <laughs> but yeah. But but that. Um, if you remember back, that I mean, that completes my 2021 
books that I would like to acquire list. Yeah, I remember. So, yeah, you've actually done really, really well with that, actually, because you got um, the ARC for the Sorcerer's Stone, like, in January. Yeah, and that, I, that was the one I was anticipating to not even And it was a great deal a popped up on eBay, and I was like, go buy this. Yeah, so I did. I went and bought it. And it was, a, um, and then, it was actually really <laughs> I got good ARC. Price. Oh, it, it was perfect. And, like, I, I don't know if I'd mentioned this before, but, I mean, you and I have talked about this. For the ARCs... I don't want mine to necessarily be like in mint condition because I want to explore them a little bit because right. there are things that are changed and whatnot. And I mean, for instance, the Chamber of Secrets one that I just got, it's it's in really good shape. But, you know, as I'm paging through it, some of the chapters have the chapter artwork in it and then some of them don't. Right. And I, I just think that's pretty cool. And it's it's not like they went to chapter 10 and stopped because they – the art wasn't done yet. Um, th- th- there are like chapters one through six have art. Chapter seven might not. Chapter eight and nine yeah, both do. Yeah, it's kind do. of just mingled in there. Yeah. So they're just, you know, they, the publishers and, and I guess Mary Grand Prey were still trying to figure out like what would work best with what chapter. So it's cool to kind of see mm-hmm. what, what at that time when the ARC was published, like this is what was ready to go. We, we think this is going to be the right one. And then like this chapter, we're still debating like what would be the best illustration to kind of showcase this chapter. Yeah. It would be interesting. And I hadn't thought about it until now to see if they had some of the chapter art that it was different, like of the ones that was included, like they had had, like if the finished book has different chapter art at any of them. I don't know. I haven't noticed any, but you know, now that you mentioned that I haven't been looking specifically for that. Um, so no, that's something I should, now I that I have all that three, there. I should really kind of comb through. I don't think book three has yep. any. Uh, pro- I, it was pretty unfinished. The cover's not even finished. Which was, that That was why that was the first one that I, I acquired. Um, but I'm, I'm glad to have all, all three now. So I have all three of those. Then the Wizard Catalan was the other one. And then the, um, that was really, I think that's it. I think those are the, the main ones. So, yeah, I, I honestly didn't think I'd get all three of those. So that's pretty, pretty exciting. Good job. It is very exciting. That is actually a really wonderful set to have. All right. Well, speaking of books, uh, should we move on to our main segment and we can talk more about books? Because that's what yeah, we like talking about. because that's why we're here anyway. For today's main segment, Carly received a question, and Carly's going to tell you about the question, and that will kind of lead into a broader, yet still specific main topic. So, Carly, what, what was the listener question that you got that led um, to that? I actually got this one quite a bit with with books, um, specifically Bloomsbury books, Bloomsbury UK books two and three. I've gotten this question like a lot in the past couple weeks, and it was, they were looking at listings on eBay, several people were, and they were... Wanting to buy first edition Bloomsbury books for their collection. Okay, great. And they were sending me listings that were soft cover books. And, you know, I would just ask them. And the listings were like the books themselves were very highly priced, like three, four hundred dollars. If not, one was like eleven hundred dollars. Um, it was Yeesh. like, I think, nine hundred pounds. It was a Chamber of Secrets soft cover first print. And, you know, I just had to make sure that they knew that one, that soft cover book isn't valued at that high and two it's not going to be a, a true first edition like a like the hardcovers because what we mean by true first edition and you'll see that on ebay a lot like true first edition oh my word super rare super valuable whatever have you and it may or may not be because the seller may not know but what i mean here is that the first edition is the very first book that was printed of that period so if the soft cover came out a year after the hardcover, it's not going to ever be a true first edition, right? So the value is not going to be there like it would be in the hardcover. It just can't be. A soft cover Chamber of Secrets first print, you know, first prints are what collectors want. We've talked about that in the past probably a few times. Yeah. But it's still, there's still going to be more of the book. We know the books are a success by this point. So there's going to be more of the books printed. So they're not super duper rare right and the value just isn't there at the end of the day not for soft cover books two through seven uk uh, bloomsbury 
there are I, I think what confuses people and myself included is that there are books that you can buy brand new that for whatever reason and these aren't Harry Potter books but you can buy a, you can choose either the hardcover or the soft cover like they release them simultaneously and that that's not always the case usually right. it's a hardcover book first for anything like the Dan Brown books that I love mm-hmm. that you don't like they always release the hardcover <laughs> book first and then I mean, within even a few months, honestly, they've already have the um, the soft cover or the soft cover pocket edition mass right. production one available. So, but there there are a few a few books that I've noticed that I looked at buying recently that are fairly new and they have either a hardcover or a soft cover. So, right, I don't and know what the with- first edition first print situation is for those books, but that's not the case necessarily with either Bloomsbury or Scholastic Harry Potter books, to our knowledge. The only book that was simultaneously published in hard and soft cover for the first edition was Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, which I'm sure many of you guys know. The soft cover, there were like 50, 150 first prints of the soft cover first edition, and it was released simultaneously with the hard cover of which there were 500. So the the hardcover is still much more sought after for a number of reasons. So that it's much more valuable than the soft covers, but the soft covers are gaining in value. But that's the only book that was released simultaneously with its hardcover. Everything else, the hardcover came first, and the soft cover came a year ish later. Out of the Bloomsbury UK, I think that almost is is because that very first book when it was published by Bloomsbury, like the expectations were really low. Like they, right. I think a lot of those books went to schools, if I'm not mistaken. And libraries. The hardcovers went to libraries. Yeah. Um, mostly. They were, and they were very well read, very well consumed. And that's what they were meant to be. And they were very exactly. cheaply made. It wasn't supposed to be a book that was supposed to be worth, you know, so, so, so much money, thousands and thousands of dollars. I mean, the first two prints of the hardcover were released without a jacket, even. We don't even get a jacket till the third print. There's, again, another tell. If you're looking for a book to buy and it has a jacket, it's not going to be with the first or second printing of that book. No. And I've actually seen, actually, I've seen a few people have, you can actually have facsimile jackets made by different companies around. And they you'll, will usually mark it as facsimile. But I have seen people on eBay selling hardcovers with a quote-unquote first date jacket. And it's a print of, you know, that first that first two, like the first cover. And we know it is because it has the windy cooling quote by the third print hardcover, the windy cooling quote had changed. So it's only going to be on the first two prints of the philosopher's stone. And there's been several different sellers who have a hardcover later print book, like much later with a quote unquote first date jacket with the windy cooling quote. And I know for that jacket was never made by Bloomsbury. It doesn't exist outside of somebody made it at a print shop. And they're trying to sell it as a legitimate thing. Do you think, though, also it could be possible that someone would just take a jacket off a later state book and put it on a first, like an earlier state book instead I've, of a, making a facsimile? Like you could just just get a better condition jacket and put yeah, it on the book. Yeah, it's called jacket marrying. It happens all the time. And but so that's why, and you have to make sure like the bottom quote changes on this philosopher's stone copy first edition as it goes you know, through various print runs, right? So you have to make sure that the bottom quote of the hard, you know, whatever the boards are matches the quote of the jacket. Because if they don't match, they weren't sold together. And then, of course, the first two prints didn't have a jacket to be sold with at all. Right. So I I think people just get, especially Americans, we're American. <laughs> yes. Like we, we didn't grow up with the Bloomsbury book being a being a, a thing you know so no. it's 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 very easy for me as a harry potter fan and book collector but i mean mostly just an american fan who grew up reading the harry <laughs> potter books like i can tell pretty easily the difference between a book club edition a regular hardcover edition the mass market paperback the soft cover that was sold individually the soft cover that was part of a set because there are like noticeable differences on the books right and i've just i've been around them they're in schools i'm a teacher they're in classrooms kids check them out from the library like every version of the book even the the school market edition like i've seen just out and about kids reading because that's the book that's published in the country i live in right but 
the, the UK version, I, I mean, there are there's there's the cover art, right? Like people kind of know that that's that's it. But I've even seen people just fawning over some of like the celebratory editions from from Bloomsbury with the stars on them. Like, oh yeah, oh my gosh, this has got to be something amazing. And I mean, yeah, it is, but it's also like not necessarily as rare as people think it is because. Abs- yeah. It's it's just it, just because it's different and you haven't seen it before as an American doesn't make it like super awesome, amazingly super rare, rare and valuable, right. right? And you see that actually a lot on US eBay. Like I and I've seen so many people taking the celebratory editions, um, which were also sometimes called movie tie-ins because they were le- they were released alongside each year the movies were released. Yes, I forgot about that. Yeah, and so and the the back cover of the celebratory philosopher's stone is red not blue and a lot of people like oh it's so pretty it's really really rare um but they're just not even in first print it's not really really rare there was a lot of them released at that point and you can still find them fairly easily on ebay but you'll see a lot of people in us and uk and sometimes other countries trying to sell those as first edition and again the first edition is the only like it's the very first time that book ever appeared it does not exist beforehand Right. So, like, just because, like, to use an American equivalent, like, when we talked about the different American cover art and, like, the Kibwishi box set comes out, that doesn't make the, like, Sorcerer's Stone Kibwishi book a first edition of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Nope. It's it's the first time that it's been used with that cover art, but that, that – the book's been published for years now, right? It doesn't change. That was the 15th anniversary. So, by that point, there were 14 years prior – that editions existed or an edition existed. You know, it's been in print before. It's just the first time, like you said, that that cover art appeared on it and it's beautiful cover art. Kibwishi is amazing. Oh, ab- absolutely. So like, it's so confusing because that edition of the book, it's the first time that that edition was made, but that doesn't mean it is a first edition book. Right. Right, right. It would be like the first print of that. You'd say 15th anniversary edition or later edition first print. Right, which wouldn't be lying because it's that that's exactly how I would label it as well. And I think I don't want to speak for Melanie, but she'd say the same thing. So yeah, probably. it's really e- – eBay can be very deceptive when you're looking at what people list things as. And I don't, yes. I don't want to think that people are listing things intentionally to dupe people. But at the same time, like – I, I'm hoping that people are doing it accidentally, but that doesn't make it okay. Like, they're they're listing things for just way more than they're than they're worth, and that that's leading to inflation. And then we get a lot and, of questions. And, well, and then we get a lot of questions of, you know, is this a first edition? Is this a first print? Or worse, I just bought this. The guy told me it was a first edition, first print. What do these numbers mean? And it's like a sixty first print later edition book and i'm like oh you need to get your money back and that's happened i've had that chat a few times yeah that's oh that's always hard yeah and um, it, i mean at the same time like i don't want them to spend their money so i've got to tell them right like you need to get your money back this right. isn't what you thought you were buying um right. but you know you and, and ebay has made it very 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 clear that the mm, responsibility of research is on the buyer not the seller Right. And I think that came about, I don't know why, but I mean, I think uh, Johnny, who's another collector, but he also collects video games. He has his own uh, oh, podcast, yeah, the Collect- Collector's Quest podcast, which is awesome if you like video games. Yes. Um, but he and I have talked a lot about how when you collect retro video games, you're trying to complete the set that it comes with originally, right? So you're trying to get... The game cartridge, if it's like, let's say it's a a regular Nintendo game, like for the original Nintendo Entertainment System, you need the cartridge that the game came with, with the label and the sticker. You need the box it came in. You need the game manual. And in some cases, you even need like the promotional material that came inside the box. And all of that together makes it like the complete version of that game. Oh, wow. So That's a lot. I wouldn't even thought about those things. Right. So it, it's it's a lot there. And so when people are selling things on eBay in that collector market, like you will see things for sale that's like Legend of Zelda NES game box only. 
you know, because people are trying to collect that. Or even recently, like if people are trying to buy, like, I don't know, people, the PlayStation 5 is super hard to get right now still. And people that have bought the PlayStation 5 sometimes will sell the box for their PlayStation 5. And there's probably a handful of people that are doing it to try to dupe people, which I don't like at all. However, there are people that are selling the box of the PS5 because let's say you got one for your birthday and you rip the box trying to open it, but you're a collector. So at some point you want a the mint box that it came in because it's part of what you bought when you bought the PS5. So people would list like box only and they'd end up spending three, four, five hundred dollars because they thought it was the whole thing, not just a box. And then there was a back and forth with with eBay and the, and the sellers and even PayPal mm-hmm. got involved. So like the bottom line is like, you need to read the description of whatever you're buying on eBay. And you also need to ask questions if you're unsure. Right. You need to just, just be 100% okay with whatever you're trying to buy. And that's why, right. I mean, Carly's available. Melanie's available. I don't know as much, but you can ask me as well if I don't know. I'll pass it along. But there there are people in the, the book And if Eric doesn't know, help. he'll ask other people who do know. Yeah. Like that's – we are a community of collectors. So, oh, that was a long-winded rant that I just had about about eBay. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. Like, we really are a community of collectors, and we have to take care of each other. Otherwise, I mean, one, it's not as much fun, because the part of this community is really about who you meet, who you know, and who you hang out with. Um, and two, like, that's how we learn. And I've found, like, it's actually through different translation collectors that I've met, you know, collecting translations, that I've seen, like, oh, this is, like a really cool Russian translation that I didn't even know existed before. And now I have to have the whole set. Right. Like people are still posting pictures of books. Oh, it's so funny that you just said Russian because I had totally forgotten that the Russian black books existed. Oh, I love and then those. Someone, someone just posted them. I can't remember who. And I'm like, man, those books are really cool. Like I don't have any of them. Mm-hmm. That might be something I'd want to get in the future. But like that had just totally slipped my mind because it was not on the, not not on my checklist to get. However, right. they look really cool, and it's something that I might want to go for in the future. So, or like it's, when it's I, I cool. was, I was a fellow collector who actually she brought. We were meeting up. She lived in a a little suburb area of Austin, and we were meeting up at a Whole Foods in Austin a few years ago. And she was bringing, you know, just a few of her translations, and I was bringing a few of mine. And we were just going to sit and talk books at Whole Foods because that's what you know Potter collectors do. And she brought her translation of Russian book one, and it was the adult version with, like, the very sterile kind of covers, yeah. the very adult-looking orange whatever. And there's so – that's when I first saw them, and I was like, oh, my word. I've got to have them. <laughs> and they only did one through five of them, and actually the first book is the hardest to find of the whole set, with book five being, like, ridiculous. Um, and those, it, those are the orange ones, right? Yes. And yeah, there's uh, so much Mel- fun. I know Melanie and I. Man, I wish she was here. Melanie and I both saw one on eBay at the same time, and it was really not very expensive. And I almost bought it, and I didn't. Oh. And then I went back the next day, and I was like, "Ah, it's gone. Someone bought it." And I texted Mel, and I was like, "Man, I'm so bummed. I should have bought this Russian orange book, book one that was on eBay." And she goes, "Oh, I bought it." <laughs> oh, I know. I I've had like, so. No. So many moments like that with other, like, Peter and I have definitely, you know, ran over each other's feet with stuff like that. Melanie and I, I think you and I have done stuff like that. It's just when you're part of a smaller community sometimes, or like some of these things, it's a smaller community. And we're all vying for the same stuff. So then, you know, stuff like that, you know, it just happens. I remember there was something I really wanted and, oh, I have like my first print hard or my first print soft cover Philosopher's Stone. It was on auction on eBay like 2014 and I was bidding. I really I didn't have a copy at all and I decided I'd save my money. This was going to be my copy. And I was so excited. And then I lost. I was the second high bidder. I was sniped at the end. And then <laughs> oh, right no. I know and I was like standing I was at work and I was standing in my little break room in my office and I was like <gasps> Just trying not to cry. Like, I was so heartbroken over something I didn't even own. But in my head, I already had, you know. I'd already picked out where I wanted it to go. You know, all this kind of stuff. And about two minutes later, if that, 
Peter texts me and he's like, look what I just won. <laughs> and I was like, what? You know, I, I was trying to be like super nice. And he, but we, we've talked enough with each other that we know kind of each other's moods, even via text. And he was like, what's wrong? And I was like, I was second high bidder. I really wanted that copy to be my first copy of this book. And he was like, oh, well, I mean, I'll sell it to you. <laughs> For five hundred dollars more so than that's I was. Ha- no, nah, you did great. So that's why that's actually how I came across my first print soft cover of Philosopher's Stone was because of that, and it just happened to be that one of my fa- like fabulous favorite people on the planet won it and told me about it right after. <laughs> yeah, that's. Oh, it's that's such a funny. small well, little world, though. It, it's it is well that's, delightful. Do you, do you remember like? No, this is a while ago, but like when the first big six book that I bought was that Greenlandic book from yes. a collector in California. And I didn't have an Instagram or anything, and that that's kind of you know when I decided I was gonna really try to go for all the translations. And within like two days of me buying that book from this guy in California, like all of a sudden when I started emailing Gu, and I'd emailed Peter casually a few times just to ask him a few questions. Um, and even Melanie, like everyone knew. They're like, oh, are you the guy that bought the Greenlandic from the <laughs> person in California? Yes. And I was like, yes, I am. I How think we all said that? that to you probably. That's really strange. Um, so, yeah. I mean, like, and I don't know if that meant that like now I'm part of this community because <laughs> I've decided that I'm going to get a very expensive book, which means <laughs> I'm the real deal and I'm going to try to get them all. Um but I don't know. It was just, it was strange. Like the word got around really quick. That, it like, does. That soul. It really actually does. Like there's been so many times when one of us will buy a book and, you know, they'll call to tell us about it. Oh yeah, I know. How do you know? Well, so-and-so told me. How'd they know? I don't know. And it's just, I, it's just what happens. It is. And there, there are some awesome listeners of our show, like uh, Brock and Brian, who I was texting today. Um, and they're both looking for some big six books as well. And they like when when they tell me like, hey, like I think I found one and they they found one before. This isn't just recent, but like when other collectors are like, hey, I found this book. I I, I got a good deal. Like I I looked here and I did this. Like I'm super happy for these people. I know. I, you know, like, I want to like reach through the phone and like give them a high five. Yeah, it, it's super exciting because the way that each of us acquire these different books, especially the difficult translations, it's all been different mm-hmm. for each book. So, it, you know, like is. someone else's story for Greenlandic might be different than mine or right. you, vice versa. Or like I had a hard time getting Bosnian and Tibetan, whereas like you didn't. No, so, I didn't. I, mine came out of Tibet very easily. Right. So it's it's just cool, like connecting with other collectors and hearing their stories. Well, and, and it was actually through Melody. Cel- celebrating celebrating their accomplishments oh it was through melanie actually that my macedonian my first translation macedonian came i forget what led up to it but i think i think we traded something maybe or or something and she had somebody who had another like a spare copy and she just sent it to me like i mean there was other things that were exchanged beforehand but she sent it to me i mean if i didn't know her and if we weren't on good terms which thankfully we are i adore her um i wouldn't have had that copy like I, right. you know, that, that Macedonian book, I've found a few others in the wild, but for the most part, that book is really hard to find. And she just, and what was so cool is I got my, my philosopher stone Macedonian from her. And then like, um, a f- maybe half a year later, I got the chamber of secrets Macedonian from Sean McAllister, who we've had on the show. And they were both from the Scotia library. I was like, oh, they were shelf buddies there. Yeah, they're shelf they're- buddies now. Now they're shelf buddies again. It's just like I could never sell either one because like I can't split up the duo. <laughs> no, you can't. I know they're that's a, so weird. It's the but dream it's, team. It's just one of those things like they belong together. They do. Um, two more eBay things. I mean, like we've kind of deviated from the soft cover yeah, topic here. But I, th- I think that segued nicely, though, into just eBay listings in general. Yes, because they do drive me you like I, I go through eBay and they drive me crazy. I'm like, no, that's not what it is. Or like one of my bigger pet peeves or not bigger but on par with what the soft cover thing is is that like the u.s 
Harry Potter books, the first editions, they used printers all over the U.S. and some down in Mexico. Like in the late 40s, 50s prints, they printed down in Mexico because they just needed printers. The books were so high in demand. And so you'll see people on eBay and they're like, you know, really, really rare Mexico print or first edition Mexico print, first print Mexico, stuff like that. And they're trying to sell these books for like $500, $600 when you can still get those for like, $10, $15, $20, Ten dollars, fifteen dollars, twenty dollars, depending on condition and whether it's signed. Which, if it, you have a mid, you know, mid forties, fifties print signed, I'm already going to be leery because it's probably a forgery. But that's a different right. Story. But like mid forties, fifties prints are books that you'll find at at used bookstores all over the country. Easily, easily, easily. You know, like printed in the U.S. or Mexico. Right. right. So it has they, nothing to do with it being sold in Mexico. It's just printed correct. there and sold in the U.S. Right, and then so my my two big eBay peeves right now are one of them the book club editions that are being sold as first edition first prints, and they're selling uh, they're for still, high, they're like still went on there. Yeah, there's still went on there. You and I talk about it all the time. It's on there. They have really good detailed pictures, which is great. However, the price that they're asking for is so absurdly high for a book that's worth maybe fifteen twenty bucks. Right. Oh, they'll say like it's a first print book club. Well, they all have the first print copyright page. All of them, right. except for like a few that don't have a number line at all. They all have the one through ten number line. It'll always be a first print. It's not valuable. Like Right. Oh! So if, if 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 you're wondering like what are we talking about, book club editions, go listen. I think it's episode two. We covered, we covered this right it away. Because different... it's a big pet peeve. It's a big pet peeve. So go listen to episode two and if if you want to look at your Harry Potter books and kind of figure out like what edition or what printing you have if you're american um you you can do so so episode two check that out and i believe i covered it on youtube and we've we've discussed it quite a bit i think so yeah and you know i've I've actually had people reach out to me and like can i send you a picture of my page and i'm like sure sure. go ahead it's easy Mm -hmm. absolutely if you want more info just send us a title page yep or like another or pet peeve of mine, and I'm a part of several different eBay reseller groups on Facebook, and they'll be like, oh yeah, I sell books, I, sell, I you know put up a picture, I don't use stock photos, I'll put up a picture of the front and back cover, and I'm always telling them, put on the copyright page, because yes. as a collector of books, if you don't include the copyright page, I'm going to have to ask you, and then sometimes you don't send the full picture, you'll send me like where it just says first edition, but that's not the information I'm wanting. I already know it's a first edition. Send me a copy or a picture of the full copyright page, top to bottom, because that's the information that I'm looking for. I'm looking for number line and several other things. So I need that. Include that. If you're going to sell books, include that, please. All right. So let's move on now to the translation of the show. The translation of the show is actually one of my stranger favorite covers, if you will. Like, I don't love it, but I also love it. Does that make sense? I I feel the same way. <laughs> it's like I would have said the exact same words, I think. Like, I don't... And so, it's the Nepco Mongolian, which is the first Mongolian translation. They only did books one and two, and they did them in hard and soft cover. And they got in trouble, so the the translate or the translation of the show, the Philosopher's Stone, which is our translation of the show, the hard and soft cover has movie art, and they were very very. But it's but it's but it's like cartoonized. It's, car- it's very almost. cartoony. It's very almost like um, if they were a video game, or it's like they pulled it off the video game movie art. You know, I feel it's, it's like they put an Instagram filter on the picture of the Instagram was a poster thing. art. Yeah. yeah, for the Sorcerer's Stone, Philosopher's Stone movie. Because the images are so flattened and kind of pixelated, but it's definitely yeah. still movie art because it's still very much like Daniel Radcliffe and oh yeah, um, you know, Ro- Rupert Grint and Emma Watson, Robbie Coltrane, and so on. It's definitely yeah. still those guys, just if they didn't have any 3D features. And then they're like surrounded by fire because that's certainly what happens in the movie and in the books. There's fire. The whole castle's fire. There's no electricity. Right. Well, that's true. That's true. So um, the the publisher, Bloomsbury, was very adamant that they didn't want movie art. It was one of the two, either the books or the movies. But either way, the books were not supposed to contain movie art. It was a big no-no. So... 
And it did. So that's why the Chamber of Secrets has like no facial features. It's just kind of like green people on the covers. It's very different. Yeah, it's it's a weird contrast to the first one. Yeah. Like, especially because the first one is so obviously the movie. Right. And then the second one is so obviously not. It's, but it's it's we it's just weird. It's and then they stopped like, after book two. It's almost like they made it so bad they're like, Well, since we can't use what we wanted, we're gonna keep it bad. Meh. Right. And they, Which, they certainly I don't, did. I don't know why I don't know what led to Nepco not publishing anymore and then switching over to another publisher. Who started again maybe with book they, one. Maybe they had that exact conversation and they went, meh. <laughs> and maybe, or they could have even lost the rights over it. Who knows? I mean, there's so much we don't know and it's Mongolia. I don't have a lot of contacts in Mongolia, although I actually do know two people there. Um, oh. Yeah. Who knew? Um and I found them through Harry Potter stuff. So there's also that. And Harrison knows somebody else in Mongolia. So, you know, we have contacts. Anyway, that's not the point. It's a really... The hardcover Mongolian um, Philosopher's Stone by Napco is actually getting really hard to find. The soft covers are still around. Yeah, I only have the soft cover. And mine... I've told the story before. I had a, just a really great interaction with the, an employee at the Internam bookstore in the capital city, which I wish I could pronounce confidently enough to say on the show. Um, is it Ulaanbaatar? Ulaanbaatar? Yeah, that's as good as I would have done, honestly. Okay, we'll go with that. Um, but he, he found it for me, even though he didn't sell it at his bookstore, he found it for me anyway. So it's, it's, it's great. And mine's not in the best condition, but it is... Good enough, and it checks the box off my list. However, the hardcover would be something that I probably would like in the future, uh, down down the road somewhere. Have you but seen the I've, chapter I mean, my art? Book is... What? Have you flipped through the chapter art and or looked at the chapter art of the soft cover? I, you know what? I, okay, I was paging through it, and I was just going to say the same thing. Like it's dark. It's definitely copied from the Grand Prix. I mean, it's copied from the Grand Prix, but it looks like it was photocopied badly. Yeah, yeah like which is, bad. The top of the pages even have the stars, like from the Grand Prix version. Mm-hmm. They most definitely do. I was just flipping through and looking. Yeah, so the this, you know, though, this is not uncommon. I was paging through another translation a while ago, but, like, I'm looking at the Halloween chapter with the troll on it. And it's, it's like the... It's on page 176, if you're looking at yours, Carly. I am. And, like, the troll is so dark, and there's just not a lot of contrast. So it looks like it was just copied with, like, a, like a Xerox or photocopier and not done very well. But Honestly, that's not the probably. only translation that's done that. So I, I don't no. know. I don't know how it was done. No, there's been several that have done that, especially in the earlier thing. And these were definitely – well, when, was, when did this come out? Um, the soft cover, I know, came out a few years after the hard – and it's all in Mongolian, so let's see if I can figure it. So the soft cover was 2014. Yeah, mine's 2014. And the hardcover, so. I can tell you, I think it's 2008, 2009. And the hardcovers were also issued with jackets, although a lot of them that you're finding now don't have jackets. The hardcover is 2009. What's interesting wow, that, is that on the, earlier. the title page of the book, I don't know if the, hard, the soft cover has it. It does not. So the hardcover of the book, you know how the first edition U.S. has, like, diamonds? Yeah. This one has, like, flattened out, like, gemstone cut diamonds, not, like, the shape. It's almost like... The soft cover has gemstone diamonds, too. Oh, I guess that page is missing out of mine. Oh, uh, I have a corner of a page missing out of mine, so... Oh, actually, that page is there. It was just, it had fallen out and flipped around. So, good to know oh. my book. <laughs> there you go. But yeah, the hardcover has that on the full title page, not the half title page. Interesting. That's crazy. Yeah, that's we should post a picture of that because that's pretty exciting. So we'll we'll throw a picture of that on our Instagram yeah, page, as um, well as of the chapter art because it's kind of interesting. It is interesting. So let's go through our rating scale here. So uh, first is the smell. I only have soft cover, so I'm going to smell we'll my smell soft the cover soft book. cover first. My soft cover has water damage, so we'll see if that affects it or not. I give mine an A for acceptable. It's fine. It smells like paper. Mine smells like a shoe, like not a very good shoe. So it's definitely going to get a troll. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> like um, I stuck my nose up to the size, pages and I was like, woo. <laughs> uh, size and proportions. Um, I'd give it a. 
I've given it exceeds expectations, yeah, actually. My nice soft cover my one. Like the it's... soft cover fits nice in my hand. I like it. It's yeah, a, actually it's... not a bad binding. I will say that, you know, my pages are starting to fall out, but there's also water damage. So I'm sure the water damage is helping the glue not wear so well. That's true. But when we talk about, like, quality of the book, like, my first group of pages, when they're glued together, is set way far forward than the rest of them. So the glue is actually not great. If I, like, really cracked the spine of my book, I bet a bunch of pages would fall out. Okay. So I'm not going to do that. Um, I, I'd give the quality, though, like, overall, I'd give it acceptable. Like, the cover is a good thickness. The page is okay. Yeah. I don't know if this is just a fluke with the book I have, but it, it's You know it's what fine. it feels like? You know what the cover feels like? The cover feels like my old economics book from eighth grade. I wouldn't know that, but cool. It, it does. <laughs> it feels like that slick, thicker, paper, cardboardy stuff that's just laminated on both sides. Yes. That's what it, it feels that's like. Good, yeah, it does actually feel... Yeah, I didn't notice that. It, it is laminated on the inside, too. Mm-hmm. And it feels like a textbook, like a school textbook. It does. Like a soft cover school textbook. Yep. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yep, yep, yep. And the hard cover, I'm going to do the smell. Is that all the questions for that one? I don't know. Um, well, we have uh, cover art or interpretation, but we've we kind of already mentioned that. that. But yeah. if we were to give it a grade, I mean, I secretly like the cover of this book, but it's not very gr- – I'd give it a D. <laughs> <laughs> but it's but like I, I love like, it, but I like I don't. the fact that it's a D. I, I, I can't give it a grade because it really is like I love it so much, but I don't. Like I could – I just love it, but I don't, and that's just. What I like it because it's bad, and so the <laughs> fact that it's bad, it's it's a D. So I'm giving it a dreadful, but I like that. So <laughs> wherever I, I that falls on the spectrum, works. I don't know. Um, yeah, so I the hardcover is actually about the same size as the U.S. first editions. It's quite a bit bigger, and it's a little bit not. A, it's about the same thickness actually as the soft cover, and the jacket is actually nice. It's very textured, and it's actually fairly thick. The boards have the same cover as the art, actually. And the boards are... Oh, so it's, are, a, it's a duplicated? Yeah. The boards... Oh. Um, aren't, they're just regular boards. I mean, nothing super duper fancy there, but they're nice. Like, it's a nicely bound book. The inside covers are nice. They're, the Actually, the front end papers are also textured, which I kind of think is cool. Um, As far as smell, let's go. It smells like... My other one, it smells like a shoe. So I think it's something with the binding (laughs) and the paper. It must be. (laughs) It smells the same. Like it smells like a musty shoe that's been in someone's closet for way too long. And mine haven't even been put up. They're actually displayed on a shelf. So I don't know what they'd smell like if they're in a box for any length of time. I know. So smell isn't great. It gets, you know, key for troll. Um, But I actually really like how it fits in my hand. I really, because it folds over nicely. It feels like it's nicely bound. It even has a very, 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 very thin ribbon bookmark. Um, oh, yeah. I like the ribbon and bookmarks. The paper, there are a couple other translations that come with those. Yeah, and the paper is about the same as what's in the soft cover, just, of course, taller. Actually, it's actually a little bit thinner. But it has um, the stars and stuff on the tops of the pages, much like the soft cover. And the font's a little bit bigger, so if you're trying to learn Mongolian or read Mongolian and you're a newer learner, this may be an easier book for you to read. True, and that's a great segue into our Mongolian facts. So as of 2005, there are 5.2 million speakers of Mongolian. Um, The article I read says there's probably more than that at this point in time. Um, That's the last official count they had. Mongolian uses the Cyrillic alphabet which is the same alphabet that Russian would use, if, mm-hmm. if you're not familiar with that term. Um, however, traditional Mongolian script is written vertically in not the Cyrillic alphabet. It's its own script. That's not what this book is written in. That would be super cool if it was traditional Mongolian written vertically because that is so beautiful if you've see that, seen that written. So I, I would encourage you to Google that um, if, if you can. Traditional Mongolian vertical script. Mongolian is also an official language in Mongolia, obviously, and also China. So, didn't know that, but I do now. I didn't know that either. Yeah. And like Carly mentioned, um, this book was published by NEPCO. Only books one and two were published by NEPCO. It, it switched publishers after book two, but the new publisher started back over at book one. So, if you are a translation collector, this NEPCO translation of book one counts as one. Also, the new translation of book one counts as one as well. 
Um, the translators of this book are. Um, I'm gonna give it a give a give my best shot here at their last names. Uh, it's two people. Last names are Ayush and Batbayar. Good are the job. Two translators of this book. I couldn't. Um, good job. Thank you. Thank you very much. And like Carly mentioned, the hardcover book came out. Was it 2009 or 2008? The hardcover is 2009. Okay, and then the soft cover was 2014. So. Yes. Um, if you listen to the main segment, which I hope you did, that is a perfect example of the hardcover book coming out first and the softcover book coming out second. Yes. And what's interesting, just kind of a little tidbit, is that when the Mansudar, the second translation of Mongolian, was coming out, they like when book one, there was a huge release party. They get they sent out totes and little notebooks. I have all those things. Um, yeah. And they're really freaking cool. Um, but they were saying that it was the only authorized Harry Potter published so far and it confused all the collectors who were like what we already have the netco so we did a little bit of digging and i believe that you know it came to kind of you know that they're quite wrong um because i believe netco was seen on you know blair the jk rowling's agency they they have they have a list of people who had or at one point had rights for different translations and i believe they were found to be on there I, you know, I've heard that same story, so I would, I would go with you on that one. Yep. So I, I just find that kind of like a little bit of interesting information. Well, yeah, and you, you would think uh, Montaner would also want to kind of throw that out for marketing purposes too. So I mean, I I'm don't sure. Know. Like and if, it was if, a if you were Mongolian, it, it, yeah. Well, if you're Mongolian, and you've read the first one, the Nepco version. Like maybe you're like, wait a second, maybe I actually didn't read it. I should go buy this one too. So. And I actually need to finish out the rest of the Mongolians. I believe the second translation is complete. I need to actually finish buying those. Speaking of Mongolian. Well, get on that, Carly. I will, Eric. I know a great person at the Internet Bookstore, if you'd like to just... If you still talk to them, if you still had his contact info, I'd probably email him and be like, I'm looking for Oh, I totally do. I'll pass it along to you. Yeah, do that, and I'll email him. Hopefully he still works there. I know. And uh, I'll be like, Eric sent me your way. And he'll be like, he's who? like, who? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe but, I, I thought it was like a way, way bigger deal that he found the book for me than he actually thought. But, but I think that's kind of a cool story because it just shows how like an emphasis on customer service. Because this has happened to me with other you know books where people have gone out of their way that don't know me just because I've, they knew that I was looking for something that they could get. Yeah, which is super, super kind. Oh, I know. And they didn't ask for anything in return. They were just happy to help. And that is why this community, even though they're not necessarily part of it, just book people in general, we're fabulous. Yes. Yay, book people. Yep. All right. Well, the question of the show tonight, we kind of already answered in the main topic, was about kind of the, the soft cover Bloomsbury books. So if you'd like to email us a question uh, for a future episode... You can do so. There's plenty of ways to get in touch with us. You can go to our podcast Instagram page, which is at Dialogue Alley Podcast. You can also send us an email at Dialogue Alley Podcast at gmail.com. Uh, Carly's website, all the pretty dot net, net, right? Mm hmm. All the pretty dot net. You can also find me on YouTube at all the pretty books, Twitter, all pretty books, Instagram, all the pretty books, and on Facebook at all the pretty books. Everywhere, all the pretty books. We yep, always. Basically talk about how you're literally everywhere i try even i try to get my hands in so many things i need to get back to youtube i actually have a video that i need to edit as soon as i finish doing some other things so i have got to get back to that also it's i've taken like a five month hiatus it's just there's been so much going on well outstanding we can all look forward to that yeah and i'm eric i'm on instagram only at nocturne eric Eric with a K and Nocturne with a K also starts and ends with a K. Uh, Melanie's not here today, but she's on Instagram as well at the Harry Potter Collection. She also has a fabulous website that you should check out. Yep. And hopefully we'll have her here with us next episode. Um, but for now, remember you can find Dialogue Alley, which is this podcast, on Apple, Google, and all your other favorite podcast hosting locations. You can also find... Um, like I said, the podcast Instagram page at Dialogue Alley Podcast. That's where we'll post pictures of things that we've mentioned today. So like those uh, really dark chapter art um, pictures that we've talked about with the Mongolian translation, we'll throw some up there for you to check out. Yep. So if you have any questions, always feel free to send us a, a, a message on there. You can always send Carly and I a, a personal message as well. 
Uh, but for now, it's time to walk back through the archway and back into your daily lives. And we will catch you next time on the Dialogue Alley podcast. Thanks, everybody. Bye.